Hey, you think timber will come with a... Do what now? <laughs> what do you... At least you're in a better mood than you were last night, man. <laughs> Got some beautiful rides coming up for you guys. Uh, I also, at the end of tonight's show, you don't know, I have an important question for you that you're not going to like. But oh, of course. Uh, I already know the answer, and I don't like it, but I'm going to ask the question anyways. Why not? So that that's coming up for you guys. <laughs> want to remind you, if I touch your car, deliver it here, or ship it to you, and you order wheel locks, I put that wheel lock in the same place each and every time. I had another call this morning. Said, "Hey, got my car in a shop, and they, I got wheel locks, and they've looked through the entire car, and they can't find the wheel lock." Did they look everywhere? They looked everywhere. Did they look in the front pouch on the left-hand side and all the way down to the front left pouch? Yeah, they said they did. Let me. I'll call you back. Oh, there it is. <laughs> well, that, that no, that's the key. I'm well, a process guy. You don't really guy. realize how deep that pocket it, it does. is. That's why I say go all the way down. Yeah. And I do that the same way each and every time. I am a very process-oriented guy. Just kind of have my my system, if you will. So sorry about that. I've had that before. Another lady in Florida. It's like, hey, we can't find the wheel lock key. I thought I ordered it. You did. Did you look? It's, it's in the front pouch. She even looked in the front pouch. No, it's not there. Did you look all the way down? Oh, there it is. I had yeah. one. That you oh, come yeah, down right. and found. Oh, yeah, yeah. you the same I, I looked the car all over. I'm like, I looked in the front pouch. He's like, right. did you look all the way down? That's right. I forgot it was my like, customer. You go, hey, down, Rick, I can't do go. this car. It's got a wheel lock on it. And I said, hey, did you? He goes, oh, no, I looked in there. And I was like, I forgot. Yeah, you are the guy. <laughs> that pouch will come up to about here when you get your arm all the way down in it. And I got a quick call. I get a lot of calls from people that got cars ordered at other dealerships. And when I get a chance to answer those questions, I do. So thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for reaching out. But I tell everybody, if you have a car ordered, it's at 3,000 status or higher. That is an accepted order. You will get a car. It's just a matter of when. You need to chill. You need to relax. Call, you know, my dealer don't know anything. So he called us. Got me on the phone today. I transferred a call to my cell phone. I was in the middle of trying to get ready for tonight's show. Answered a couple of questions for him. I said, yeah, I understand. You are going to get a car. It's a matter of when. I, too, have cars ordered that are scheduled for June build. Clearly, we're into July that didn't get built. It's just a matter of when, and they've extended. Now, he saw an order video, and then we've updated the order process and uh, all the crazy stuff going on. It's changed twice, I think, if not three times. Production for 25 doesn't start until mid-September, like the 9th, so 24s are going to build till late August into that first week of September. So, yes, you'll get a car, just a matter of when. So Let's I have, be clear. That's as of now. That's, <laughs> that is as of now. <laughs> well, okay. I haven't got the new memo on Thursday. That's right. That's, well, that I mean, got, you say something, then people won't hold your feet to the fire. Right, and then now, it changes. As of now, that's Freaking the plan. changes again. Just, and we'll, <laughs> right now is not the time to do it, but we'll talk more about, is the ZR1 a 25 or 26? That keeps changing, and I keep giving you realistic, plausible ideas on what it could be. Um, they say now it's a 25, and I've got some concerns on that. Future video coming up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and join us for great Corvette content conversation and just some of the fun that we have. Let's answer some questions for you guys. Uh, I do want to tell you one thing, though. Now nah, I'll save this for the end of the show because it goes, it goes with my question. It, can I just start? This is, again, another, speaking of changing things constantly, uh, yes. the C8 DCT service is such a hot freaking topic on this car. Sure especially if you're buying a used car, even if you've got a new car. Us old school guys want to change the oil at 500 miles or 1,000 miles. Go ahead, but you're going to have to do it again. You're not doing yourself any service. No. They've extended now in a recent tech link that you just got. Now, you can do that service plus or minus the 7,500 miles, 1,000 miles on either side of that with no damage under normal driving conditions. So, yes, you could feasibly do your first service now at 6,500 miles or up to 8,500 miles. Under right. normal driving. Under normal driving. You're doing Under. tracking and all that kind of stuff. It changes the matrix. If you've got a 23 or newer, you can see the matrix of your DCT filter, which I think should be backward compatible to all the other C8s. It's just a great feature that I enjoy having on my car because of the way that I use my car. So just keep that in mind. We're going to obviously continue to talk about this, but I had to what? throw that out there right away because yeah, we just got another email. Another on. thing that we're changing. You right. know, was 7,500 was the, was, the was standard. The Right. Well, one year, 7,500, that was it. Right. Oh, that's not good enough? Okay, we'll do two years. Right. Oh, that's not, okay, we'll do three years and 500 miles on each side. No, yeah. that, okay, we'll do a yeah. thousand. It's just ever changing. Yeah. Now, the three years that Chuck's referring to is on 24s only. Yeah. Three years or the 7,500 or, again, plus or minus this 6,500. Let me just say this because of what I promote on the channel. If you go three years and you only have 6,500 miles on your car, you have to... <laughs> <laughs> Drive the car, man. I'm 15 months in, and I'm gonna I'm going to Kentucky on Thursday. I'm gonna flip 26,000 miles coming up on Thursday. And 
what we're telling you is as of now, <laughs> subject to change. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I don't know. It's never changing. All yeah. right. What do you got for us in Tech All Tuesday, right. buddy? This one comes from the 716 area. It says, uh, how do I remove a front lift location from my memory? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. That's an easy one. If you have a memory program, the next time you approach that location, the same screen that popped up that told you to save it will be the same screen that'll give you the same arrow on the left-hand side of your, it's on the right-hand side of the steering wheel, it's the far left-hand arrow that you actually can delete that location. It'll ask you on the screen, once you approach there and it starts lifting, you're gonna have about five seconds to do that, so watch your screen, hit the arrow if you wanna delete that location. And that's another good question with the used ones hitting. Oh yeah, you actually, know. I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah people, you know, it's like, hey, what's going yeah. on? <laughs> yeah, I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, here's a good question. This has been a um, an interesting question. It's come up several times. I've never addressed it on the channel, and being that I order the cars and understand the the matrix of different little nuances. Uh, on the interiors, and this is exactly one of those. Uh, thank you, Rick and Chuck, for providing the Corvette enthusiasts valuable information, whether it's a current owner or potential new owner. I got a 17 Grand Sport Black Rose Z07 seven-speed manual. That's a cool car, and I absolutely love it. I plan on adding either a C8 E-Ray or a Grand Sport when it comes available to my collection, but I'm, I'm not selling this, this C7. Here's my question. I prefer the 3LZ interior, and the owner of this Amplify Orange picture you're going to see here in just a second sent me this photo of his window sticker, said 3LZ. It had a dominant sky cool gray interior, and on the door panel, he had the sky cool gray insert. I've researched this to the best of my ability, and I've seen the two-tone seats, and you don't always get the colored panels. I've even seen pictures of Mike from Break of Speed who just got his E-Ray. That is a 3LZ interior with the two-tone gray, but he doesn't have the gray insert on the door panel. Here's the picture I'm talking about. And here's the difference. When you do the level two carbon fiber, the matrix to change that up just a little bit, if you do sky cool gray and you do 3LZ, yes, you're still gonna get your, your uh, roof and your A pillar, B pillar, but the door insert panel, as you saw, is gonna be that gray. Mike's is all black because he didn't do the level two carbon fiber, and that's the difference. Thanks for watching, thanks for asking. All right, this one comes from Stan. It says, I have a 2016 3LT Z51 Corvette with just over 6,000 miles on it. Uh, I'm driving it even less now that I have a 2023 HTC C8. Regarding the C7, uh, I change the oil every year. So far I've done, uh, I haven't done any other maintenance on the vehicle, but I'm considering purchasing new tires since these are eight years old. What other services based on usage, miles, or age would Father Chuck recommend that I perform on this car? Get your pen out. He's got a list for you. Well, yeah, the tires are good because, yeah, most manufacturers will tell you after six years they should be replaced regardless of the tread. It becomes a safety issue. They start to dry rot and crack. But you got eight years, so yes, I would replace those. As far as the services, uh, I usually put them on a five-year plan. Like you said, this car is a 2016 with only 6,000 miles on it. So it's hard to get to a mileage standpoint, but from a time standpoint, even the coolant, everybody says, oh, coolant's good for 100, 150,000 miles. But they leave out the part that is five years or 150,000 miles. Right. So I usually do everything at, at five years if the, if the customer hasn't had anything done. What we do is a fuel system service, a brake fluid exchange, a coolant flush, a rear diff service. If you have a manual transmission, we do a manual transmission fluid exchange along with a clutch fluid exchange or an automatic transmission. We do a, a transmission flush on the, on the automatic transmission. But yeah, that's, and I do it every five years. Uh, like the, say the brake fluid, I think in the owner's manual is supposed to be done every two years. But if the car's just setting, and right. obviously it is with only 6,000 miles, <laughs> you can extend that and then I do it all every five years. Okay, good tip. Thanks for watching, thanks for sending. It's nice to have some C7 questions. Oh, yeah. I think, I think you got one more coming up too, don't you? All right, Rick and Chuck, here's a Tech Tuesday question for you. Have you guys seen any issues with the cooling seats? I was out yesterday running my AC full blast and I 
didn't seem to have any cooling through my seats whatsoever. And okay, I'm not even gonna continue this up. Phil, thanks for sending in the question. We get this a lot. And if you remember, you and I were at dealer training for C8, and I brought up the question when we were hitting, we were just playing around inside the cars. First time we had a chance to see the C8 Corvette, and I hit what he calls the cooled seat, wrong terminology, and it was a blue light. And I had said, I have a question. Notice a blue light on there. Are these now cooled seats rather than vented seats? Because before, if you remember in C7, it was more like an orange or, or like a yellow light or whatever the case may be, because it was a vented seat, it wasn't a cooled seat. The way I always knew it in Chevrolet, when you saw blue, it was an actual air conditioned seat. So I assume that's what we were getting. And no, that's not the case. It's a vented seat. So if the roof is on and windows are up and you have cool air circulating within the cabin, you're gonna get cool air coming up on your rear. When the right. top is off, top down, windows down, you're circulating warm air. And that's why you're not gonna feel anything. And that's the difference because it's not an air conditioned seat. It is a vented seat. It's only gonna vent the air within the cabin. So that's why you correct. didn't feel anything. You are correct. Uh, we get a lot of that in service too. Oh, do you? Yeah, my, my, my cooling seat don't work. It's not a cooled seat. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just picking up whatever the temperature is inside the cabin. It's got a blue, light. Got a blue yeah. light right there. Right. Yeah. yeah, I know. That's what I thought the same thing. Yeah. If you got the, like you said, top up, windows up, and AC blowing cold, and it's nice and cool, then yeah, you're going to get some cold air out yeah. of that seat. Yeah. Otherwise, because it's just recirculating the air out of the cabin up through the seat. Right. All right, this one comes from Michael. It says, my question is about ceramic brakes on my 2018 Grand Sport. I have just over 5,000 miles on it. I know I need to drive it more. <laughs> and I'm getting brake worn messing. Is this correct? The brakes only last 5,000 miles. That is correct. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't, no. Uh, it says, I don't track my, or ride my brakes. Could the sensor be bad? Yes, that's exactly what's going on. The sensor went bad. And the problem with these sensors is there's no way to diagnose it. The best way I can explain this brake warn message on these C7s is it's like a strand of Christmas tree lights. When one burns out, it takes the whole strand down. And GM didn't give you any diagnosis as far as left front, right front, left rear, right rear. It just says, hey, there's a problem in this system. And there's really no way to diagnose it. I've tried. I've run re resistance checks on the sensor. I've, I've done everything. About the only thing that can be done is to replace all four sensors and start over. Yep. And his, he was wondering if it was covered by his extended warranty. I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what extended warranty you bought. Possibly, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, you have to, the, the clarification on that. Some of that stuff is wear and tear items, Correct. breaks fall into a category of that, but yes. uh, being that it's a sensor, uh, you might be covered on that, so I don't have a clear-cut answer for you on that. Yeah, but I if don't. it was pads and rotors, that's a wear and tear item, so sure. being, this is not, in fact, worn. You know, yeah, being but they still, you know, they I, I still consider it a wear item because you wear when you wear the brakes out, the sensor rides against the rotor and can wear it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's half a dozen one another. Yep. And uh, it either contact the warranty company or contact the finance office at our dealership and they can answer that for you, look it up, and let you know. But thanks for saying that's a good question. It's nice to have some sure. C7 questions. Um, here's a question that um, has boggled my mind. First, I want to tell you I'm excited. I actually booked last night. Uh, it's not a full day session, but Ryan and I are going to be participating in a track night at America event at freaking pit race, man. God, I love that track. It's right next to the NCM Motorsports Park in my heart. But pit race, I love it. Flow's so nice, great facility, great people, and that's a great event. So we're gonna be participating in that. Whether or not I have track alignment remains to be seen. And that's my question for you, my friend. What's that? I just, and again, just being very candid on camera with you guys, what the hell is the deal with this freaking track alignment? I have customers telling me <laughs> shops refusing to do the track alignment, can't yes. do the track alignment, and I've been on schedule for three months and I don't have my track alignment done, and I talk to Heather and she says, oh, oh, it says right here, uh, we don't do track alignments here at Coughlin for C8 Corvettes. Okay. First of all, let's straighten this up. The last appointment you had for your track alignment, the day you dropped it off, you added four or five more. Oh, by the way, oh, my no, check no, engine no, lights no, on. Whatever, man. Oh, by okay. the way, my front trunk the service message lights on. Oh, by the way, I want a DCT filter and an oil change. So yeah, okay. but no, I don't do track alignments. They're labor intensive. It's gonna cost you a lot of money 
I'm trying to bite my lip right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, he always tells me, I want, I'm a paying customer. I want to be treated just like everybody else. Oh, yeah, I don't else. get any deal. You should see my freaking bills, man. Okay. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Look at this. I'm like, wow. Hey, thanks for all the help in Tech Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We do not do track alignments. It's not a race shop. It's a dealership. Yeah. I'm glad we settled that. I, I just want to know why. I just told you. It's, it's going to take me over a day to do this track alignment. Time you knock all four of the control arms loose. It is more. Flip the washers. Everything you put on the car. Most of it has to come back off now. Uh, all your right. un PDI it and this. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So just it's just we're just not doing that. Yeah. Well, it's like uh, you know we've talked about the Build a Bear projects. I can't be out of business for a whole day on one car. Oh, I didn't. Mind I knew the you question. were going to like the question. I, I don't the like question. the answer. <laughs> I'm still. Uh, Hey, anybody do track alignment out there? <laughs> yeah. the frick, man. Uh, uh, call Mr. Four. He's got track alignment. No, he, he's the one that actually texted me. He went to three different shops, two of which refused to do it. Oh, the gee, other one how had about it, that? And the other one had it for a full day. Uh-huh. Well, so I'm right. <laughs> Whatever, man. Bingo, bango. There you go. They had it for a full day. <laughs> Finish this up before I get really mad. But now that he found somebody to do it, and he has his track alignment, he loves it. I know that. Well, yeah, he has a track specific car. Well, and yeah. That's all he does. And I don't mind doing that. I referenced Mike from Break of Speed, good friend. I'm um, actually going to be doing an interview with him. We've delayed that, and I'll tell you why in a future video, um, because of the Corvette Invasion show coming up. But um, I don't know if you suggested maybe there's an in-between, because I daily drive my car. But if I have to forego that and go full-blown track alignment, I'm willing to do that and wear out the tires a little bit more to handle that for when I am, for the few times on a high-speed session, have a better handling of performing car. Sure. So I, I still want it. And I've been wanting to share with you guys that experience for me because I'm gonna give you raw, real data. How does it feel, Rick? Is it different? What do you think? And I wanna be able to share that with you, but I, I can't because I don't have it. Because we did the, I was telling you off camera too, we did the Toledo thing. Oh my God, dude. Fun event, highlights coming up. But I realized something. I'm always learning a little something from each event, what I need sure. to do, what I should have done. But we're out here at this airport. We're at a, we're at a runway. Uh -huh. And guys are making comments, and every time I'm turning and Ryan's turning, there's plumes of black smoke coming up from the tires. We ate the freaking daylights out of these tires, just chewed them alive. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm on a runway. That's supposed to stop an airplane. These, this is not a track surface. I just had to order new freaking Toyo tires. I go, oh my gosh. They rough that surface up so when the plane comes down, it grabs the tires and starts them turning. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> then they can apply the brakes and stop oh, the plane. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. i just I'm happy to be talking with you guys. Sorry we're rambling. We got one more for you on Tech Tuesday and then your beautiful rides. Yeah. Yeah, this one comes from Paul. It says, still loving the entertainment and information you guys are putting out there on our beloved Corvettes. Keep the content coming. Here's my Tech Tuesday question. My battery died on my 2023 C8 after six months of ownership. I boosted it and drove it a few hours. After an hour of being parked, it would restart, but it would be a weak crank. Yeah, we've talked about this too. The all today's alternators really don't recharge a battery. That's right. Uh, they do that for fuel economy. They're there to maintain a fully charged battery. So, that being said, he said I removed and recharged the battery with the charger overnight, reinstalled it, took it out for a drive to my local car meet, and it wouldn't restart after sitting a few hours, which is quite kind of embarrassing since it was a brand new car. Right. To save time, making a warning appointment, dropping off the car and having to wait for it, since I was planning to take the car on a long trip, I went ahead and put a new AC Delco battery in the car myself, which resolved the issue. No more weak starts, and it starts up right away every time. I'm curious if I can be reimbursed for the battery I installed on my car myself by returning the defective battery to the dealer, or am I eating the cost of a new battery? <sighs> I mean, it, it's... They can try to get it warranted for you, but more than likely because you no. put the battery in, yeah, it's going to be on you. Because I, every deal, GM sent out to every dealer, it was a required tool. We have to have, a, there's a new machine that we hook up to, to test these batteries. And not only does it test the battery, but we have to plug it into the car. It reads the bin, it reads all sorts of information. So without the car, the battery in the car and the battery, at, or in the car at the dealership, 
yeah, the cost is probably on you. And that thing that you plug in is probably trying to read if you got aftermarket stuff that's causing a draw, probably. so therefore they wouldn't cover it under warranty. And furthermore, like you said too, um, off camera before we read this one tonight, uh, he had an issue in the other battery, so you probably still have some history trouble codes oh, in there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because when these batteries get weak or go low, they set off a plethora of history codes. Yeah. Lost communication, low voltage, lost communication, low voltage. So all those codes, even though you had the battery disconnected and replaced with a new battery, I guarantee you all those history codes are probably still in your vehicle right. and could cause future issues. That's what happens sometimes. Uh, the check engine light will come up, but everything kind of goes through that BCM. It's not the engine per se. It's just something communicating or not communicating through right. that module, and that's what you have to look into in the stuff that they plug in and dissect it a little bit further and deeper for you guys. Yep. All right. Got a beautiful ride segment for you guys right now. I want to thank again everybody at the Holy Toledo Autocross event at Toledo Express Airport. You're going to see a lot of those highlights uh, as far as pictures and participants. Everybody was so nice. Again, it's that culture within the Corvette culture I love sharing with you guys and a couple other cool cars as well. Thanks for sending in your pictures. There'll be an email address coming up here. If you want to send in a beautiful ride, just give us your first name and the state that you're from. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. So we're not doing track alignment ever on my car? Not here. So it, Coughlin does not do track. You could have freaking told me that three months ago when I first asked. I believe we did. No. <laughs> I believe I missed it. <laughs>